from Los Angeles. This is the Echelon Radio Network. So this is Jerry Hemsworth with the Echelon Radio Podcast. And today i am got the great pleasure of sitting with Nicole Mosier of Forge. How are you doing today? Hey, Jerry. I'm great, thanks. Good. Good, good, good. Tell me about Forge. What do you guys do down there in Culver City? Absolutely. So we are an outsourced marketing company. Mm -hmm. Uh, We work a lot with small business and startup companies Ah, and nonprofits. Okay. Um, The way that I think is easiest for us to explain it is anyone who has a marketing need but doesn't necessarily need someone Mm full-time in-house. So we do websites, we do social media. On the startup side, we do a lot of strategy and branding. Um, That's really great because that's so important. Many uh, business owners, I know from our own experience, come in and they have no clue. They, mm -hmm. They just know that they need to start a business of their own Mm -hmm. or that they want to, but they know they have to market and they have no idea. Yes. Yes. And a lot of the times they're in a high growth space too. So whatever it is that they're doing needs to be done pretty efficiently Yeah, and not super expensively. Mm -hmm. And so we like to come in and be kind of that right arm. Yes. Um, We limit the number of clients that we work with at a time because we are a smaller team. How do you do that? Um, Well, Pretty naturally, because Uh sometimes we're coming in on a level of consultation, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that can look like anywhere from 5 to 20 plus hours where we're actually becoming and stepping in as part of their team. Right, right. Maybe they're going for another round of investment, and they need to get all of these things aligned and ready for a pitch pretty quickly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we've even gone so far as to do some of those pitches on their behalf and presentations like that to investors as well. That's that's very, very cool. Uh, so you limit the number of clients you have at any given time. Yes. Is there a hard number or does it have to do with bandwidth of number of hours? It's really bandwidth. Yeah. And it just, we kind of tailor how we spend our time accordingly. Mm-hmm. Uh, we generally wouldn't work with more than probably four consulting clients at mm-hmm. the same time, mm-hmm. just so that we're able to really step in and give them our attention and feel like we are part of their team. That's really smart. That's a really smart way to run a business. And you have a partner, right? I do. And what's her name? That's Kristen. Yes. Rector. And what does she do for the company? She is our brains behind the operation, per se. She's our designer. She does a lot of the development, Mm -hmm. um, everything behind the scenes. She does uh, meet with clients as well, a lot of the branding and strategy. Mm -hmm. We call her our our, chief strategist. Chief strategist. Yes. And so you basically do biz dev and client management and uh, press the flesh, meet and say, and take the f- the first hits. When, when exactly, <laughs> yes. Uh, and anything client-facing is generally me. Uh, mm-hmm. I do a lot of our business development, lots of networking, and then client communications on the backside. Normally, I'm that first line as well. Gotcha. Yeah. How did you two form Forge? And what's behind the name? So Forge stands for Four Great Endeavors. Wow. Yeah. Um, I had a, an independent consulting firm uh-huh. and focusing on new businesses, specifically new businesses that were in a space of high growth. Mm-hmm. So a lot of formation, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of funding to get things off the ground, startup funding, things like that. Um, any new business is going to need a website. They're mm-hmm. going to need branding. They're going to need everything that Kristen does. Yes. And so I found myself hiring her a lot. Oh. (laughs) And um, she and I had coffee one day. Yeah. And we were talking about why we do what we do and what we like doing, what we like about the things that we do. At the time, she was working for a a top design firm out of Mm -hmm. Santa Monica. Okay. And we were talking about, you know, we had already been working together on several projects and so she was telling me that, you know, she loves what she do or mm-hmm. what she does. And she really enjoys working with small businesses. Mm. One thing that was disheartening to her was how expensive some of the design can services get. can get. Exactly. Yeah, very. And how it made them so inaccessible 
Mm-hmm. For small businesses. And for quality. Startups. Exactly. Getting quality for an affordable price. Yes. Yes. And I was really just impressed okay. by, I mean, obviously her quality of work, everything mm-hmm. that she had already been doing and what I'd seen and love her as a human. Mm-hmm. And so we were sitting there over lattes and I was like, wow, well, I'm sick of paying you. Ah. Why don't we join forces? Because everybody that I was working right. with needed what she does. Right. Right. And she's phenomenal to work with. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And it was this sort of light bulb moment that uh-huh. went off based on the common value of we really believe that small business and startup companies should have access to high quality resources. Oh, so cool. And let's make them accessible. Yes. And let's take everything that we do and make it targeted towards businesses that are in a high growth space so that all of the things that we do and the ways that we do them can grow with them as they grow. I find, um, and maybe you find this as well, when clients have been burned and, Mm -hmm. but I mean, you get, you're getting more startups and maybe people in the beginning, but when many clients have come in and they've been burned by a uh, high priced, mm-hmm. uh, under deliverable or under delivered, uh, marketing firms. And we kind of have to clean up the mess Yes, and it irritates the snot out of me and trying to build that trust again, yes. with the client. Do you, have you, you've encountered that with Absolutely. I think one of my biggest pet peeves is when we run into a website client and we take a look at their back end to quote things out and everything's hard coded. Yes. And it's built and designed to be a tool that keeps you coming back to your designer to even change a letter or a font. A a font, a number. (laughs) A date, a phone number, anything. Yes. Yes. And what should be a 30 second. Yes. Not costing anything sort mm-hmm. of a change. Mm-hmm. It's, oh, we have to rebuild this. Yeah. Or something like that. It, for thousands of dollars. Exactly. And you're like, wait a minute, time out. And they're yeah. trapped. Yes. Exactly. We have run into so many situations where a client has been trapped by their, you know, I'm sorry, but their web person. Mm-hmm. And it and they've been charged up the wazoo. And when we have to deliver the news of saying, I'm sorry, but for what you want this website to do and to be, it has to be completely rebuilt. It's cheap. It's often less expensive yes. to start from scratch yes. and give them something yeah. that they can keep forever. Yep. Change themselves. Yep. Yes. Yep. And, and the other piece, and I don't know if you've run into this, is when they can't get usernames and passwords from their IT and or website person. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're kind of locked out. And um, Intentionally. Yes. <laughs> and that's what's unfortunate is, is and, and we've said this to many people, when you start on your marketing path for anything digital, you have to have the usernames and passwords. Mm-hmm. You hold the keys to the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, we just get to to borrow them, but you own them. Mm-hmm. And anybody who doesn't let you do that, run away, run Red very flags. fast. Yes. Absolutely. We are so on the same page, you and I. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so tell me, what do you, you uh, when you're not working, sure. what do you love to do? Uh, I really like all things outdoors. Mm. Love camping, love hiking. Camping? Love fishing. Yes, camping. Fishing? Uh-huh. Where do you like to go? Anywhere. Right? Yeah, really anywhere. Oh, wow. Um, we usually do the local within two-hour drive trips, <laughs> um, but we've made it a point to start visiting all of the national parks, too, and <sighs> so we've been kind of checking them all off our list. We have our little passports with stamps. Oh, that's and, so cool. Yeah. What was the last one that you guys did? We were, we were at Yosemite. Really? Yeah. We've been making that an annual trip, which is just <sighs> lovely. It's different every time, too. You can't. You can never get enough of Yosemite. Now, you have a 10-year-old daughter. I do. Is it just you and Summer that go camping, or do you, you go with a group of people? What is your? What do you love to do with that? We have a friend group that we go with. So there's nice. usually like 20 to 30 of us. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's oh. fun because it's a bunch of, you know, there's grown-ups and there's kids and yeah. everybody. It's just a blast. 
So that does make it fun. We it's call not them just the two of you going. Yes. And she's like stuck with mom and like, exactly. No, hey, she has a blast. Home? I have a blast and strength in numbers, and we call them our family. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I love that idea. I um, I have a sister in law that lives right near Yellowstone. Have you been to Yellowstone mm-hmm. yet? Yes. And what did you think of that? I haven't been. Oh, magical. Is it? Yes. You have to find the bears. Oh. We were on a grizzly bear hunt. And you found the grizz? Yes. <laughs> Three of them. It was so wonderful. Really? Mm-hmm. Was it one of them a baby? One baby and two adults. Oh. oh. Yeah. Gosh. It was amazing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I want to go to Arcadia in Maine. Okay. I haven't been there. And, um, and there's a couple that are uh, in the southeast that I want to go to, but there's still so many out here. Like you said, two hour drive. Of course, Montana is not two hours. Right. But um, yeah, there's some really good ones and we are so blessed to be within that, that range. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. And I hear you're a dog person. I am a big dog person. What kind of dog (laughs) do you have right now? She is a mutt. She's a husky mixed with a cattle dog, maybe a little bit of shepherd, lots of energy, lots Lots of fur, lots of fur, (laughs) lots of love. She's very special. (laughs) And you said she's a year old. She's one year old. Yes. She just turned one. Mm -hmm. And how did you get her? So she was a rescue. We had lost a 15 and a half year old dog mm. last year. And one of my girlfriends found her running around the neighborhood and just took one look at this puppy and was like, you're perfect. Why wow. are you here? Yeah. Let me. And so she brought her home and checked for a chip and everything and no collar, no chip. And um, I happened to be having brunch with her that week oh. and was showing her the shelter puppies that I was looking at. Yeah. And she's like, wait, I have the perfect dog for you. Stop looking. And showed me the videos and the photos that she had in her phone. And we arranged for a meet and greet and trial run. And here we are. And how old was she at the time? Six months old. Yeah. Older, a little bit older. Um, Yeah, definitely not 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 puppy puppy. Infant puppy. Puppy enough to eat all the blinds in my house the first night, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) The first night. The first night. She didn't wait a week. Nope. Oh, hello. She made herself very comfortable. Nice. Mm -hmm. We have a two-year-old pup, um, Mookie, and I thought we were getting away with him not really chewing on much Mm. other than his plentiful uh, dog toys. And um, I sat down in my favorite antique chair that used to belong to my grandmother. Um, Hadn't sat in it for a month. It was in my living room. I sat down and felt the arms <laughs> and that little sucker puppy oh, no. <laughs> had chewed all these arms that both the arms on this chair and it, literally they were like splintery and I went oh gosh of all things for you to chew <laughs> the antique grandma chair mm-hmm. boy oh boy but he was sneaky because it's not something that you would notice right away not like blinds mm-hmm. like what the heck yeah that was the same day trip to Home Depot that night. <laughs> How long did you did it take before you put them up, the blinds back up? Because obviously oh. she was going to go for it again. If No, they had to go up. Oh. I mean, we had bare windows. Oh, oh, <laughs> gosh. It was bad. So does she still have a, a chewing thing, or have you been able to distract with other things? Well, she likes to chew. Yeah. So we've provided her, her with all of the things that are appropriate to chew on. Right. right. And have learned how much uh, entertainment, yeah. exercise, <laughs> friend's time she needs to yes. get that out yes. and tucker her out yes. so that by the time we're ready to sit down and relax, yeah. she She's is good too. too. <laughs> <laughs> Movie night with, with the girls on the couch, right? Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I know that. I know that so much. You, um, you told me you like to read. I love You're to read. Big, big reader. Yes. What is it you like to read the most? What um, type of books? Well, I'm in the middle right now of, of a historical novel series by Marie Benedict. Okay. And we're also, I read to summer as well. 
Uh, Summer's my daughter. Yeah. And so we are in the middle of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, I love that one. Yes. This is our first C.S. Yes. Lewis book. We just finished Pippi Longstocking. Yes. Great. Mm-hmm. Great. She loved Pippi. Oh. So it was very fun. I have another uh, a recommendation in case you haven't heard of it. From the Mixed Up Files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. No, that sounds amazing. Yes. Okay. She's the perfect age for it. Oh. And that's a that's one that I I still remember being read too. Mm. Um, and that one is that's excellent. I love that. Is yeah. it funny or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's about two kids that, um, that basically learn from this older woman and her. Yeah, you get you just it's it's excellent. It's excellent. You'll love it. That sounds fun. We did Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, which is mm-hmm. short. Did you did you read Mrs. No, P- I've heard oh. of it, but I haven't read it. Hysterical. Oh god, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Yep. Isn't it great as a parent you get to rediscover either novels from your own childhood, mm-hmm. but also the new stuff and what's appealing to the kids. Yes. You know, the 10-year-olds and the 12-year-olds and stuff. You get uh, some really good stuff. Absolutely. Oh god, that's so great. Well, thank you so much for sitting with me today. Thank I you love for getting to know me. you. And Absolutely. We have so much in common, it, you know, in marketing, but also with being moms and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I look forward to, to spending more time with you. Me too. Thank you so much. Take care. Presented by Echelon Business Development. More than just networking. Way more.